Good afternoon on what is a cool, grey and overcast day. It is Tuesday the 18th of January, back in the Reed Nook with one last parcel courtesy of my friend Neve, who has kindly let me do an unboxing. I of course and am accompanied in this by a cat who is not ours and a nice hot cup of tea. So, um, let's get this open. There we go. That okay, came away quite easily. And what we have got, oh, okay, you can just pass the tail. Okay, <laughs> you can see it is a copy of Dark Sun, okay? <clears throat> Dark Sun box set. Okay, now this isn't a box set, it was originally. And uh, Face the Fire of Dark Sun, a world ravaged by sorcery. This is perhaps one of the most interesting and um, innovative settings that uh, TSR ever did for Dungeons & Dragons. It was done for Dungeons & Dragons 2nd edition. It was a desert world with psionics and... Um, a world that had been essentially sucked, its life essence sucked dry by overuse of magic. Um, <clears throat> so, let's have a look. Amid the barren wastelands of Athos lie the scattered city-states, um, each in the grip of its own tyrannical sorcerer king. Protecting their own business with their own positions with dark magic, they de demand absolute obedience. The restless mobs are placated with bread and circuses. The arenas overflow with spectators seeking release from their harsh lives. The land outside the cities belongs to no one. Savage elves race across the, de the deserts while insectoid thrike cream satisfy their taste for blood. Dwarves labour at projects beyond the scope of men and feral halflings lying amb lie in ambush. Athos is a land of deadly magic and powerful psionics that offers no co um, compromise, no promise of glory or even of survival. Those who do not want to, to, to do not have the cunning to face life on Athos will surely perish. Leaving, no, leaving nothing but bones bleached white under the blistering rays of the Dark Sun. Face the fire of the Dark Sun, enter the most challenging AD&D game world yet. On the south, sounds of, um, of your face, three new uh, PC races, models half dwarf, half human, specially bred for combat, Thrycreen, the savage mantis warriors of the, of, of the barons, half giants bred for the tremendous, the tremendous size and strength, Three new PC classes, uh, gladiators, heroes of the arena, the ultimate warriors, templars, wicked priests who serve the sorcerers, kings, defilers, wizards whose powers drain the life around them. More powerful PC, all, all Dark Sun game characters begin at third level. Ability scores that can go up as high as 24. All PCs have one or more sonic powers. The two new, the, the new character tree allows players to advance many characters at once. And important, in order to explore the world of Dark Sun, you must have a copy of the complete Psionics handbook. Now, if you can see what you've got inside, so you've got, you would have these maps and the books, and yeah, the, um, well, that's a flip book. Essentially, you would have uh, the adventures in here as spiral bound books, and you would, you know, um, flip them through like you would like a notebook. But anyway, Wizards Coast has made this available as a print-on-demand book. All in one, everything you need in one book. And it's fantastic that you have this um, back, and back and accessible. Um, and the first thing you notice is um, that it's the writing, the writing written, it's been presented um, okay, uh, on, not, uh, on a serif font that is unlike you would see in Dungeons and Dragons second edition at the time, which are all serif font and you know basically very easy to read. This has got its own style and look and choice of font, which gives it its own char ca uh, character. Um, so we quickly got onto the um, the races of um, Athas. Almost said the races of Arakeen there, but I'm thinking of a completely different setting. So we've got elves. Um, and that's a, actually a, a, pen, a, a pen and ink piece by Brom, of all artists. I mean, he's doing the both the internal and the external artwork. So, fantastic cover there. Uh, and then he's doing the pencils in here. Um, you know, there we go for the half giants and so on. Character. 
Um, then we've got the, the, the feral halflings, which really does, because this is a set, the one thing this does, it, it kind of t t set up, um, upsets the apple cart in terms of what you expect in Dungeons and Dragons fantasy. Um, you know, low magic, psionics, um, really nasty feral um, halflings who want to eat you, and here's the mole. Um, different ra radically different races to what you would expect, and the Thrykleen as well. Um, so, uh, tables and weights, um, more artwork. So this is a, everything all together um, is, uh, what, I'm just trying to see, because you, the thing is, one of the things that I can see is you've got the, the maps themselves have been, well, the poster maps have been reprinted like this in parts. So that's not a completely successful, but um, the, 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 you can see it, it sort of works. Um, so you've got the City of Tyr um, and the Gladiatorial Stadium and Kallax Ziggurat here, but that's at the end of the book. But I'm just trying to find a uh, page count, um, if there's a page count for the whole book. Because the other thing you've got in here is more artwork. Um, I mean, almost great, um, great wagons, almost like um, the um, Jawa sand crawlers in, in Star Wars. Um, so you've got um, a caravan, caravan exterior, and then you've got interior map as well. Really nice little details um, that add to the game, and you've got these constant nice images which are going to be obviously shown to the players at some point but that's extra um so i don't think there's a necessarily a, a total page count given in here because it's they really what they've done is um they, for example that's page one they've really just taken the core books and and i mean i'm not saying they slapped them together but they slotted them together um one after the other um, so it does make it a little, little, little more difficult to um, access, but at the same time, at last, you've got this um, available to play. Um, uh, and you know, because you, you can pick up the other content, um, and so you've got the different classes and the changes to the classes as well, because they're all slightly different. Um, the, for example, as I remember right, the magic user literally, the wizard would have to draw from the land around him, but he could, um, you know, he would, it meant he could actually draw great power, but that would uh, defile the land. Um, so he could either, you know, essentially that would ultimately turn him to uh, the darker path, as it were. So here we've got the Templar, the, new, the other new class. But, uh, That's the player character classes, um, we've got discussion of alignment um, and uh, things like you know how alignment works in the setting. Um, this is still very much a very big part of, the, of, of Dungeons and Dragons, uh, and um, it discusses proficiencies because um, the, the second edition of Dungeons and Dragons introduced the concept of proficiencies and skills so that player characters were no longer just all they could do was the things that their class allowed them. Um, they had rules for that. Um, and then we got to magic, so all the available spells. And I have to admit that if, if there's one setting, all right, okay, if there's, uh, well, if there are really two settings I want to see come back for fifth edition, and I know a lot of people do, Dark Sun is one of them. And then, of course, Planescape. Um, to, so yeah, everything in here, you know, to play, of course, bar the core rules, you're going to need a, a copy of the Sonics handbook. And Sonics, uh, the other problem with Tuck Sun is that the Sonics system never really kind of worked. Um, you've got this thing with all the magical items, and these would have a very dry feel to it. Um, it um, the, uh, because magic had been sucked out of the world, um, and so was um, so so magical items as well, um, and what survived um, wouldn't wouldn't be the sort of standard things that you would you would find. And we've got rules for things like dehydration and movement, movement by night, stuff like that. So, so survival becomes a really important factor in in your dark sun game as well. 
We've got a list of new spells, rays, uh, create water, create food and water. Those become really important because you know they are a, a means of, of, of survival. And then we get on to the, so that's 96 pages. Uh, then we get on to the next book, which is the uh, Wanderer's Journal, a comprehensive guide to the peoples of Athas. Yeah, that starts at one. So yes, they've just slotted them together. Um, So it's, it's of course it's nowhere near as good as a um, ha having the original box set if you've got that or you can find one at a reasonable price. Um, but you know, um, so we've got a discussion of of, of a Fassian society um, and beginning to sort of like put a, find a place for the player characters and their roles beyond being adventurers, where they come from, what's happened to them. Um, and how they interact with the world, and you've got another um, caravan going from city to city state to city state, uh, as I showed you earlier. So, yeah, that's Athassian society. Um, you also have hermits and silent masters, and you almost have a lonely tower or hermitage um, for both. Um, place of druids. Um, and how they get by. Then we go on to the geography of the Sea of Silk. So you've got different environments within the barren land. It's not just desert. There's there's deeper sand. There's barrens. There's there are forests as well. Plateaus, stony wastes. St sorry, stony barrens and so on. Um, so there's variety there. It's all unforgiving, but there's variety. So at, you've got an atlas of the Chia region. Um, again, nice artwork capturing the places. So that's a shame of that. And again, you know, apart from obviously with some of these more verdant places, it's not very many. It's got a really nice, uh, dry, the artwork's got a dry, dusty feel to it. Um, and I feel a, a fantasy that is uh, unlike the traditional fantasy of Dungeons and Dragons. Um, to, so past the Atlas of the Tear region we have um, uh, the, the Monsters of Athas. And not very many of these really um, travelled beyond Athas. Um, but, uh, but um, you know, they were very singular to the world. So you've got the Braxet, the Dragon of Tia, and so on. Lots of them, interesting creatures, which were really going to surprise your your player characters because they won't have come across them. A silkworm. Um, got a piece of fiction, um, which is uh, so knowledge as well. And we that adds colour, flavour, um, and then that gets into um, the flip book adventure, which isn't presented as a flip book. It's, it's presented straight, um, and, and in some ways it's probably a bit easier to use. Um, but, uh, so that gets you involved, and then we've got the dungeon master's book as well. Um, which, uh, and it's going to construction like have the players um, flip to play a card one. So you would have to really present, um, adapt that to running it normally, or do a lot of uh, print out a lot of handouts um, to present to the players. Um, so you have, uh, you know, a this is um, 14, 15, 16. Um, part adventure or series of encounters um, in that flip book. Right. And then you get on to uh, the various illustrations in the back. And there is, there, honestly, there is this, that section just to show you. Um, with the maps, takes up that much of the book. Um, so it's about 200 pages or so. There's a lot in here, as you would expect as a reprint of the Dark Sun setting book, setting box set. So yeah, I think that's quite a handsomely done uh, book, um, you know, uh, collating uh, what uh, what was a very physical product 
um, that you can still find, uh, not at, not cheaply, but you can still find and is worth looking at. And I think this is obviously a much cheaper way of uh, having a copy and even exploring it. Um, there is a fourth edition version of it which you can play uh, if you play fourth edition, although it's not very well supported. There's really only a source book and adventure and whatever content that was supported via um, uh, the play program. Um, otherwise, uh, this is the primary primary source for your Dark Sun. And also, it's times as Wizards of the Coast um, gives us gives us the Dark Sun setting that we want. Anyway, um, thank you very much for watching another unboxing in the Nook. If you've enjoyed this, please do click the like button down below. And of course, if you've got any comments or feedback, I appreciate you taking the time to post those. And lastly, if you want to be alerted to get more unboxings in the Nook, where you will see me out here um, with a parcel, in this case, uh, courtesy of Neve, so thank you very much for that, um, and a book or game which I will unbox and talk about to the best extent of my knowledge for roughly 10 minutes or so, all of course accompanied by a cat who is not ours, and a nice hot cup of tea. Mm. Then please do hit that subscribe button. Thanks again for watching another uh, unboxing in the Nook. I'll be back again soon with an un another interesting game to unbox. Bye for now.